in week 2 we are discussing the random variable and we started with the definition of the random variable then we discussed the distribution function then we have related the distribution function uh, with the random variable with the probability in the form of uh, we get the CDF CDF of the random variable and by seeing the CDF we classify the random variable or we get the types of random variable that is a discrete type or continuous type or mixed type random variable. So now we are moving into the function of random variable. Function of a random variable. Sometimes uh, we started creating uh, one random variable. And then we come to the conclusion oh, we need another random variable what to do so we can always create a new random variable from the scratch that is our real valued function from omega to r satisfying the condition then we can conclude that's a random variable but the easy thing is uh, suppose you are able to relate the already found one random variable with the new random variable in some form then you can uh, find the new random variable and its distribution through the existing already the random variable. So the existing random variable we use the letter capital X is given and uh, we are interested to create a new random variable that is Y. Instead of uh, creating a new real valued function and find out uh, we make a relation in the form of uh, earlier random variable as a uh, g of x where g is a function from r to r. I will repeat x is a given random variable that is defined uh, from omega to r already we know it is a random variable and uh, we know the CDF of the random variable from the CDF we know it is a discrete type or continuous type or mixed type random variable. We are interested to find the distribution of another random variable that is Y. For that we identify the relation that is G of X. Now the first question is whether uh, the way we make a relation G of X uh, whether that is going to be a random variable. That means uh, whether uh, y inverse of uh, minus infinity to small y that is belonging to the same uh, probability space. So that means we have a given probability space omega f p and in this probability space x is a given random variable. And uh, now the first question is uh, whether y is a random variable. That means uh, whether it satisfies y inverse of uh, minus infinity to small y sorry closed interval that is belonging to f for all y belonging to real. If it is a random variable then the second question is what is the distribution of the random variable y. I repeat the issue we have a probability space we have a one random variable and we are interested to find the distribution of the other random variable for that uh, we make the relation g of x therefore uh, first question is whether y is a random variable and then uh, if y is a random variable what is the distribution of y. First we can answer the first question whether y is a random variable. Whenever x is a random variable and g is a Borel measurable function then if g is a Borel measurable function then the y is a random variable. Now what is the Borel measurable function? In the measure theory course one can study if you have a real valued function the inverse image of a Borel set is belonging to the Borel set then we can conclude the given real valued function is a Borel measurable function. As far as this course is concerned we do not need to worry about uh, the Borel measurable function and so on. We can take it every 
continuous or piecewise continuous functions or a Borel measurable function. So, we can make sure whether the g is going to be a continuous or Borel continuous or piecewise continuous function. Therefore, it is going to be a Borel measurable function. Therefore, y is a random area. So, we can use this concept every continuous or piecewise continuous. One should know the definition of a piecewise continuous. So, every continuous or piecewise continuous functions or Borel measurable functions. Therefore, the first question is answered. So, as far as this course is concerned, we always give g such a way that y is going to be a random variable. Now, the question is how to find the distribution of y. Distribution means uh, in general it is a CDF of the random variable. If you know that it is a discrete type random variable, if you find the probability mass function of that, that is also called a distribution function. If you know that it is a continuous type random variable, then if you find the probability density function of the random variable, then that is also called a distribution function. So, in general distribution means a cumulative distribution function of the random variable. Otherwise, it could be a probability mass function or probability density function based on the, the random variable is a discrete type random variable or continuous type random variable. Now, we will start uh, find out the distribution of function of random variable with a few cases. So, let us start with uh, examples through that uh, we will uh, study the distribution of functions of uh, function of random variable. The first example let uh, x be a discrete type random variable with uh, the probability mass function given for different values of x what is the p of x. So, this way also one can give. Suppose x takes the value minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1 and 2, what is the probability mass at those points then we are defining the probability mass function. That means, uh, other than these points the values are 0 and if you add uh, this is going to be 1 therefore, this is a probability mass function. So, let us uh, give some values such a way that it is going to be a probability mass function. So, we are going for the example to discuss uh, function of random variable therefore, uh, I am just going for the easy example in which uh, the probability mass function at the point. Uh, so, this is a probability mass function at the point minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1 and 2 all the values are uh, 1 by 5. Fine. Now, I am going to define new random variable or new real valued function which is uh, y is equal to x square is the easiest function. So, the possible x values are minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1 and 2. The way we defined uh, y is equal to x square. Now, the random variable y is uh, going to be a discrete type because for different values of x uh, the y values are going to be either 0 or 1 or 4 because y is equal to x square. Therefore, the way I have made a relation y is equal to x square and x is a discrete type random variable, I can very well say the random variable y is of the discrete type. Therefore, I can go for either CDF of the random variable y or I can go for the probability mass function of y. We can make a nice uh, uh, 
<coughs> the possible values of x that is minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1 and 2 and this is mapped with uh, the possible values of uh, y that is uh, 0 is mapped with 0 and uh, minus 1 and uh, plus 1 is mapped with 1 and uh, minus 2 and uh, plus 2 is mapped with 4. So, this is a mapping from x to y. That means, uh, if I want to find out uh, the probability of y takes a value 0, that is same as I have to go for what is the possible outcome or what is the possible values of x which gives the value y is equal to 0. So, x equal to 0 will give the value y is equal to 0. Therefore, probability of y is equal to 0 is same as probability of x equal to 0. And I know that probability of x equal to 0 is 1 by 5, therefore this is 1 by 5. Similarly, I can find a probability of y is equal to 1 that is same as either a probability of x takes a value minus 1 or a probability of x takes a value 1, both will give the value y is equal to 1. Therefore, probability of y is equal to 1 is nothing but it is a 1 by 5 plus 1 by 5, therefore it is 2 by 5. Similarly, you can find a probability of y takes a value 4 that is a x takes a value is a minus 2 as well as x takes a value plus 2 those probabilities will put together give the probability of y is equal to 4 therefore that is again 2 by 5. Therefore, I can make a probability mass function for y. that is uh, takes a value 1 by 5 when uh, y is equal to 0 and 2 by 5 when uh, y takes a value 1 and 2 by 5 when y takes a value 4 and uh, 0 otherwise. That means uh, from a discrete type random variable and y is equal to x square gives the again discrete type random variable because it has the mass at the point 0, 1 and 4. If you add all the probability masses, it is going to be 1. So, this is a probability mass function and if you draw the CDF, then it is 0 till 0, at 0 it is a 1 by 5 height, then it is 1 by 5 till 1, at the point 1 it becomes a 3 by 5, then 3 by 5 till 4 and at the point 4 onwards it becomes 1. Therefore, this CDF has uh, three jumps. So, this is a discrete type random variable whose probability mass function is probability of y takes a value 1 by 5, 2 by 5, 2 by 5 at those points otherwise it is 0. So, this is the easiest example in which uh, we are getting discrete random variable into discrete random variable. Then second example is uh, let uh, x be a continuous type random variable with uh, since it is a continuous type random variable I am going to give the probability density function of the random variable x that is uh, takes a value 1 by 2 between the interval minus 1 to 1 otherwise it is 0. Whenever the problem is given you can verify whether it is a uh, correct probability density function it is always greater than or equal to 0 that is the first property. Second property if you integrate in the whole interval minus infinity to infinity it has to be 1. So, if you check uh, minus infinity to minus 1 the probability density function is 0 from minus 1 to 1 it is 1 by 2. So, if you integrate minus 1 to 1 1 by 2 you will get 1 and the integration from 1 to infinity again the probability density function is 0 therefore it is 0. So, the whole interval minus infinity to infinity the probability density function that integration is 1 therefore it is a probability density function. Now, I am going to define new random variable. Why I am saying the random variable that means uh, we are saying it is a Borel measurable function therefore it is a random variable. So, we do not need a question about the whether it is a random variable or not we started with the random variable. So, define a random variable y 
which takes a value 1 when x is lesser than 0, it takes a value minus 1 when x takes a value greater than 0. I am defining a new random variable which takes a value 1 when x is less than 0 minus 1 when x is greater than 0. I can write capital letter also. So, capital X is a random variable. So, when the random variable takes a value less than 0, it is a 1. When it is greater than 0, it is a minus 1. I can use a great north 0 also. So, now you can find the probability of y takes a value 1 that is same as the probability of x is less than 0. That is same as since x is a continuous type random variable, x is less than 0 or less than or equal to 0 both are one and the same and it is same as minus infinity to 0 and the probability density function. And the probability density function is uh, greater than 0 between the interval minus 1 to 0. Therefore, it is minus infinity to minus 1, it is uh, 0 plus minus 1 to 0 f of x dx, uh, here it is 1 by 2 dx. Therefore, you can uh, integrate and you can get the value and this value is going to be 1 by 2. The way we define y takes a value 1 for x is less than 0. So, probability of y is equal to 1 that is same as probability of x is less than 0. Similarly, the probability of y takes a value minus 1 that is same as probability of x is greater than or equal to 0 that is same as integration from 0 to infinity f of x dx that is same as uh, Again, the f of x is greater than 0 between the interval 0 to 1, whereas 1 to infinity the density function is 0. Therefore, it is 0 to 1, f of x is 1 by 2, the other quantity is 0. So, if you simplify, you will get the value 1 by 2. Therefore, it has the mass the probability mass at the point minus 1 1 by 2 and at the point 1 it has another 1 by 2 and if you add all, both the masses it becomes 1. Therefore, uh, this is a discrete type random variable x is a discrete type random variable. The first example x is a discrete type y is also discrete. Now, the x is a continuous type random variable. The way we defined the function y, the y is a discrete type random variable whose probability mass function is 1 by 2 at the point 1 and minus 1, otherwise it is 0. Now, we are going for one general result as a theorem and this theorem will be useful whenever you want to find out uh, the probability density function of a continuous type random variable whenever x is also continuous type. So, I am going to give the theorem first, then we will give the proof of the theorem followed by one example, then I will conclude. Let x be a continuous type random variable with probability density function is small f of x if 
G is a strictly monotone function and differentiable then the probability density function of the random variable capital Y as a G of capital X is given by see the theorem you can directly write the probability density function of the random variable Y in terms of uh, the probability density function of x, I can rewrite this as the suffix x. I am using capital small f for all the probability density function. By writing suffix x or suffix y, we know that we conclude uh, it is a probability density function of x, it is a probability density function of y. So, the probability density function of y, you can write it in the form of probability density function of x by replacing x by g inverse of uh, y not only that by multiplying the absolute of derivative of g inverse of y with respect to y. So, this is uh, going to be greater than 0 whenever y takes a value g of x. whenever y is not going to take the value g of x, it is going to be 0. That means, uh, by just substituting uh, x by g inverse of y in the probability density function of x, you will not get the probability density function of y unless otherwise you multiply the absolute of uh, derivative of g inverse of y with respect to y. That means, uh, you recall uh, the probability density function has uh, two properties, it is going to be greater than or equal to 0 and the integration is going to be 1. By multiplying this absolute quantity, the integration is going to be 1. Therefore, this multiplication uh, absolute of uh, derivative of g inverse of y with respect to y, that is called a normalizing constant. You can prove, you can prove, I will uh, give the proof for the one part uh, since I am saying uh, strictly monotonic uh, it could be increasing or decreasing. So, we will do the one part, similarly one can do the other part. So, you can find a probable CDF of the random variable y, correct, that is nothing but uh, the y is replaced by g of capital X less than or equal to small y. Whenever I write capital letter that means it is a random variable, whenever I write the small letter that means it is a variable values. So, I am directly finding the CDF of the random variable y, I am replacing y by g of x that is same as the probability of x is less than or equal to g inverse of y this is valid only g is a strictly monotonic function in this case it is a strictly increasing function once i know the cdf i can find the probability density function by differentiating both side with respect to y by differentiating cdf uh, with respect to y i can get the probability density function of y that is a small f suffix capital Y. That is nothing but once you do the differentiation in the right hand side with respect to Y, you can use the chain rule. Therefore, it is a, the probability density function evaluated at the point G inverse of Y, then differentiate the G inverse of Y with respect to 
So, this is valid when g is a strictly increasing function. Suppose g is a decreasing function, then also you can do the similar calculation, then you will get the values with the negative sign, then you can take the <coughs> negative negative positive. So, you can go for absolute of this in general, whether it is a strictly increasing or strictly decreasing you can take absolute of this derivative terms and the substitution the probability density function of x with the g inverse of y will give the probability density function of uh, y whenever uh, y is equal to g of x otherwise it is 0. We can go for uh, example for uh, how to apply this theorem. So, easiest example example number 3 because we have already discussed two examples. The third example let x be a let x be a <coughs> continuous type random variable with the probability density function f of x takes a value 1 between 0 to 1 otherwise it is 0. That means, it is a constant probability density between the interval 0 to 1 otherwise it is 0. If you integrate you will get the value 1 then great or equal to 0 therefore, this is a probability density function. Now, we are defining a new random variable y is equal to minus 1 by lambda ln of 1 minus x. I am defining new random variable y is equal to minus 1 by lambda ln of 1 minus x. You can uh, prove it, it is a continuous function, therefore, it is a Borel measurable function, therefore, it is a random variable. Here, the lambda has to be strictly greater than 0. So, x is a continuous type random variable with the probability density function 1 between the interval 0 to 1, 0 otherwise and y you define it as a minus 1 divided by lambda ln of 1 minus x. Now, you can verify whether uh, this theorem can be applied. x is a discrete, x is a continuous type random variable, y is this function, it is a strictly increasing function therefore, uh, and a differentiable also. So, therefore, you can apply the theorem and you can directly get the probability density function. So, the probability density function of y that is a probability density function of x by replacing a x by g inverse of y then a derivative of g inverse of y with respect to y in absolute. So, we have a small y is equal to 1 by lambda ln of 1 minus x. So, you can find x, you can find x. So, the x is going to be <coughs> x is going to be 1 minus e power minus lambda times y. That is a g inverse of y. So, you can find the derivative of 1 minus e power minus lambda y with respect to y, you will get uh, that is uh, <coughs> lambda times e power minus lambda y. So, you need a g inverse of y as well as uh, you need a derivative. Therefore, this is going to be the probability density function substituted uh, x by g inverse of y but uh, since the probability density function is a constant between the interval 0 to 1, therefore, it is going to be again 1 and the derivative with the absolute that is e power lambda times e power minus lambda y. And uh, if you do the little uh, homework, uh, when x lies between 0 to 1, you will get uh, y lies between 0 to infinity. Therefore, the probability density function is between 0 to infinity. 1 times, so 1 can be avoided, so 0 otherwise. 
So, whenever uh, x takes a value 0 to 1, y takes a value 0 to infinity, in that uh, the probability density function is lambda times e power minus lambda y, otherwise it is 0. So, since this theorem is satisfied, we are able to get the probability density function directly. You can uh, find the CDF of the random variable y directly without using the theorem also. By using the theorem, we got the probability density function, but uh, the another method you can directly compute uh, what is the CDF of the random variable y that is same as the probability of minus 1 by lambda ln of 1 minus x less than or equal to small y. Then you can do the little simplification, you will get a probability of x is less than or equal to 1 minus e power minus lambda y. If you do the little simplification, you will get a probability of x is less than or equal to 1 minus e power minus lambda y. Therefore, I can go for probability density function by differentiating both sides. That is going to be lambda times e power minus lambda y when y is lies between 0 to infinity. I am skipping in between some steps that you can work out separately. So, there are two ways either you can apply the theorem or you can find the CDF first by differentiating you can get the density function. Sometimes uh, it may be a uh, not uh, strictly increasing or strictly decreasing. In some interval, the function may be monotonically increasing, some interval it may be monotonically decreasing, but still you can use the theorem. So, I am coming back to the remark of the theorem. Whenever you have a issue in which the function is uh, the function g be a piecewise strictly monotone and differentiable. In some intervals. Earlier, the whole interval it is uh, strictly increasing or strictly decreasing. Now, it is piecewise strictly monotonic uh, and uh, differentiable in some intervals. We label these intervals as the i1, i2, and so on. Suppose i n intervals. Then we can find the probability density function of the random variable y, then we can find the probability density function of y as sum of n intervals in which you get what is a sum of f x at different uh, k g inverse, then find out the absolute of uh, derivative of uh, g inverse of y, the kth one with respect to y. So, this is going to be the probability density function which is greater than 0, whenever you get the points which is uh, y is equal to g of uh, x, otherwise it is 0. So, that means, uh, there is a possibility you may have a function in which it is uh, increasing or decreasing or decreasing or increasing or it may be in many intervals. Then you can add all the intervals uh, corresponding uh, density function. If you sum it up, then that is going to be the probability density function of y. So, we have uh, seen many examples in which uh, discrete to discrete, continuous to continuous or continuous to discrete and so on. So, the way we create the random variable y accordingly, you will end up with the different uh, types of the random variable for y.
or a given uh, random variable x. So, in conclusion, whenever uh, x is given and you are interested to find out the distribution of uh, y as a function of x in the g, in conclusion, uh, we can go for the table form. When x is uh, of a discrete type, I am just writing d i s c discrete type or uh, x is a continuous type random variable or uh, x is of the mixed type random variable. The way we define the y is equal to g of x, the random variable y that is also of the form uh, discrete or continuous or mixed. you can think of uh, many functions in your mind, then you can uh, make a line whether uh, you will get the discrete to discrete or uh, discrete to continuous or mixed and so on. So, in 3 into 3 9 out of 9 which possibility is possible that you can make out. So, discrete to discrete is possible I have given the example also y is equal to x square example where x is a discrete therefore, y is also discrete. From discrete, you can go for <coughs> from the discrete type of random variable, you cannot go for the continuous, you cannot go for the mixed type random variable. Whereas, if you have a continuous type random variable, by default you can always make a function y is equal to x or something, therefore, from continuous to continuous it is easy. From continuous to discrete is possible. I have given one example, x is a continuous type random variable, y is equal to 1 and minus 1. So, that example, sorry, y is, a, yes, y is equal to 1 and minus 1, that example is the continuous to discrete type example. Since continuous to continuous and continuous to discrete is possible, therefore, a continuous to mixed is also possible, because uh, the continuous means uh, the unit mass is distributed over the interval hold the real line. So, you can make a many to one function therefore, uh, some density can be a mass at some points and uh, whereas, a few density you can keep it density as it is therefore, continuous to mixed is possible. I will repeat from continuous type random variable mixed type random variable is possible because the unit mass can be transformed into density in some interval and masses at some points. Therefore, it is a mixed type random variable, because uh, continuous to continuous is possible, continuous to discrete is possible, therefore, continuous to mix is also possible. Now, we come to the third example, third type. When x is a discrete type, when x is a mixed type random variable, mixed means it has a density as well as mass. So, by making a many to one function, all the density you can put it a mass at some points. Therefore, mixed to discrete is possible. Very important observation, mixed to continuity is impossible. Mixed to continuous type random variable is impossible, because mixed has a mass at some points and density between some interval. So, mixed to continuous is not possible. Whereas, uh, by default, uh, by one to one mapping, you can always have mix to mix. Therefore, whatever you do the different problems in the distribution of function of random variable, at the end, you land up with, uh, these are all the only possible ways, you will get the different type of random variable for y. And once you know the distribution of x, you can find the distribution of y in the form of uh, CDF or if you know that it is a discrete type random variable in the form of probability mass function, if you know uh, is a continuous type random variable in the form of probability density function. With this, uh, we are completing uh, the random variable with the three topics, uh, one is a definition and the CDF and the second one is uh, types of random variable and the third topic is a distribution of function of random variable.